with uh, no further ado, I'd like to hand it off to Christopher Quinn. Terrific, thank you, Mike. And welcome to everybody who's joining the webinar today. Thank you uh, and good morning for our friends on the uh, West Coast, including uh, my co-presenters today, uh, Michelle Perez and Alejandro De Silva. Uh, so we'll get started in just a minute or so. And obviously sense of belonging is our topic today and uh, how uh, Near Peer and Fresno State work together to enhance the sense of belonging uh, on their campus. So um, hence the poll question. So while we give uh, the last few people a minute or, uh, or, or so to join, if you answer that poll question, we'll review those in about 30 seconds from now to see, is this a top of mind issue uh, on campuses? Is, is it a strategic focus? Is it uh, being talked about? I think this is a, uh, you know, a really interesting time uh, that we're in right now when it comes to this topic. Uh, and I think it will be transformational for higher education. So uh, with that, let me give you a quick intro as to um, uh, me to me and my background. I'm Christopher Quinn. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Nearpeer. Uh, but before Nearpeer, I've been in higher ed for uh, just about three decades. I've been the president of a couple of small colleges, and I've been with uh, a you know, giant university as well and Purdue University Global. Uh, and for me, uh, I have a real passion for those things that affect student behaviors that lead to great student outcomes, because really uh, higher ed is all about outcomes. You know, enrolling in higher ed uh, doesn't mean much if you don't um, um, stay enrolled and graduate. And with near peer, we have something that, that uh, helps the students feel connected and uh, go on to be successful. So with that, uh, um, Mike, how does, how does it look? All right, here are our, our poll. Response is 93%. You know, this, this number is going up, if anything. So this is really uh, amazing to see uh, that 93% of the campuses, this is a, a, a heightened awareness of this topic. And I think that, you know, the, the pandemic, if there's any silver lining, uh, it brought this issue more top of mind for uh, leaders on campuses. Uh, this is a problem that, you know, predates uh, the past two years. Uh, you know, students uh, are really searching for that uh, connectedness to the community, and it really does uh, drive outcomes, as well as predict, uh, you know, a student's mental health and wellness overall. So uh, with that, um, you're in the right place since 93% of the campuses are talking about this. So we will uh, uh, dive in and and take a, a closer look. So uh, first, we're gonna look at what does sense of belonging mean? I want to introduce Near Peer to you, and then really spend a lot of time on a deep dive case study with Near Peer at Fresno State, where we launched uh, before the fall of 2021 term. Uh, and after that, uh, there'll be plenty of time uh, for Q&A, both with me and with the panelists, the front line uh, from Fresno State. We'll hear from some Fresno State video uh, leaders by video as well. So with that, let's uh, let's dive in. Uh, you know, this idea of what is sense of belonging, you know, this, this was a, a definition uh, that was originally created by a key researcher in this field. And I think it about sums it up very well, you know, being accepted. And what does that mean? Being accepted for who you are. Uh, so there's a lot of diversity and inclusion themes in here. Being valued, that everybody brings something to the table uh, that's important in, in your community. And feeling in, in inclusion, right? Diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, are really popping up here a lot. Uh, and you're being encouraged by others, your peers, uh, and staff and administration and at that university you feel that you're an important part of the life and the activity of the community more broadly. So that's the idea of sense of belonging that, that we all talk about. But it's good to pause and think about well, what, what does that really mean along the way? But most importantly is what can you do about it? So a lot of researchers have looked at how you foster a sense of belonging uh, on campus uh, or in the workplace for that matter. And I think we're seeing uh, some key themes emerge here as well. And we'll see this 
uh, also from a perspective of near pair at Fresno State, how these things are integrated and, uh, and near pairs help support this for Fresno State. So genuinely valuing culture, broadly culture, the concept of culture on your campus is, is, uh, is essential. Uh, making a meaningful first impression. So those of you who are here today from admissions, this is uh, you know quite important. You know it starts early. That sense of connectedness starts when when a student starts looking at your school, let alone when they're getting close to graduation or beyond. Uh, and we have a, a diverse community. It's important that everybody recognize and affirm their students uh, and their specific cultures uh, overall. Uh, this next one, I think Michelle and Alejandro will have a lot to say about this one. Pay attention and listen to your students. See them, hear them. Uh, and this leads to a, a strong feeling of connection. And finally, giving your students a strong sense of agency, that they're involved in how they're integrated into the community. So these, um, these pieces from the Annie uh, E. Casey Foundation are a good backdrop to what we want to talk about today. So let's uh, dive in. Our next piece is, you know, what is near peer for those that, that, that don't know much about us? We'll cover a little bit here to give you that context. Uh, and really what we're about is improving student sense of belonging. That's our reason for being. That's why we're here and that's uh, why we're, we're talking today. So, you know, what does that mean? Um, uh, uh, you know, this idea of how do you foster that connectedness? How can you help catalyze it on your, uh, on your campus? That's what we care about. And we want to reach all students. This is, this is you know, particularly important that we reach all students, not just the most extroverted students who, you know, feel comfortable, uh, uh, you know, trying to get followers uh, in the world. This is really about genuine peer-to-peer -peer connection. And I think that uh, when you talk about a strong network, one-to-one -one connections are really uh, even more important than one-to-many connections. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, you know, you're hearing from me about how near peer is different, but I do want to acknowledge that the outside world, uh, the higher ed world has recognized what we're doing here at near peer in places like the Christensen Institute, and uh, who they focus on uh, innovation in education. Uh, the Heckinger Report and uh, Edge Ventures uh, have all written about the work and results that we're getting with near peer at places like Fresno State um, and a diverse spectrum of institutional types. So, um, outside world thinks that, but what do the students think? The students love this tool they really do uh and these are some quotes from students we'll hear from students in a, in a little bit here's some more but you know you could you can invite students to do something but if it doesn't resonate they won't use it uh fortunately with near peer they love it they love it and it's it's meeting their needs uh and that's part of that affirmation of uh, what students need and want so we'll continue there well how does it do this uh how you know what are we trying to address specifically you know, every student comes to campus thinking, will I find my people? Will I fit in? You know, will I find other people like me at the institution? This is, you know, a number one concern. And they want some help uh, finding uh, new new connections and new friends. You know, sense of belonging, uh, not only does it have, you know, mental health outcomes if it's not there, it has persistence outcomes that are negative if you don't have it and students leave. If they don't feel connected, they're not going to stay to graduate. Uh, uh, to get to your DEI goals, having the richness of every individual be very accessible uh, helps bring in inclusiveness. And I think we'll we'll see a little bit about that. And finally, student satisfaction. When students talk about, um, you know, do I like it here? Do I like my institution? Uh, when you tease that apart, community is central uh, to that. So with that. Uh, we've had a, a lot of great results uh, along the way. Uh, Mike will chat out a link uh, for those of you who have not seen our Impact of Belonging report. Mike will chat that out, a link, and you can um, uh, go to the download there. It's, it's, it's about 60 pages long with, uh, with six great case studies of different institutions and, and the outcomes that they've had and the problems that they were trying to address in, in part by using near peer. So. Uh, let's have a look there. 
uh, giving you context on what does near peer look like and what does it do. Uh, here, a student from Loyola of New Orleans created a uh, TikTok video that talks about the profile creation. So a profile is really central to what Nearpeer is and having people identify who they are with about 2,000 different variables possible. So we'll take a quick look at this and then we'll move on and see some samples of um, uh, profiles. Hey everyone, so I'm Ashley and I'm going to be talking about the app Nearpeer. The first question is, what is Nearpeer? Nearpeer is an app for students to interact and network with each other for the upcoming school year. To use the app, first open up the App Store and download Nearpeer. Once you have it downloaded, you can go ahead and open up the app. Here you'll be prompted to enter your student email address and pick your school. If you already have an account, you can go ahead and log in again with your student email address and the password that you chose when you set up your account. So these pieces are key because once you're in, you'll see a welcome screen and three dashed lines in the top left corner. It's a there you can do your profile. Your school. In your profile, you can see your bio, your name, your hometown, your activities, any groups that you're in, and any peers that you've already connected with. If you would like to edit your profile, you can go to edit. So we'll pause there. You get the idea of creating a profile of people saying who they are. This is this is critical, so I wanted to be sure that you saw that because it's something that you really can't find anywhere else, um, and particularly on social media. We like to think of ourselves as the antidote to social media. Uh, um, free platforms uh, you know, um, sell that information to advertisers who are very concerned with privacy, and it is not sold to, to advertisers. And I think it's your data, and you can learn about your students, but the students want that, that assurance as well and it allows them to search on things and find each other hey, uh, uh, in, a, in a couple of ways. So the searching capabilities, our algorithms in the background, once you create a profile, you hit that little button in the lower left-hand corner that says discover, and it shows you people with whom you share a lot in common. So if a student put in their profile, hit discover, I might see uh, Jean Daniel here, and I'll see that we share seven things in common. We are, you know, in uh, the Promise Scholars group, we have interest in computer programming, basketball, and some other things. So I can click on Jean Daniel, I can see his full profile then. I can see all the things that he likes to do. And those things that you see cir uh, circled in purple, those are those things that we share in common. So now we've really broken down a lot of barriers. Imagine how long it would take to find out if the person sitting next to you likes artificial intelligence and the French language and basketball and they like to watch The Office and a dozen other things in here. So this makes it easy to do that. The things that are shaded in purple are John Daniel's passions. These are his most important interests. And again, that's important to, to get to. Students share a lot of information about themselves, their pronouns, which is important in the inclusivity uh, world. Uh, their career aspiration, hard to find that really anywhere else outside of major, uh, uh, where they live, and some of their um, uh, other life experiences. Things like if a student was a veteran or a transfer student, that would show up uh, in their profile as well. Uh, last note on searching in near peer, the manual side of things. We can have that automatic matching, but I can also say, hey, I like hiking, and you know, uh, is there anybody else who likes hiking that lives within 20 miles of my hometown, right? And this could happen during the summer. So people may be going to the same school and they can find each other in advance. So you, you know, with a couple of clicks, you can find all the people who like hiking or something even more uh, um, uh, uh, random, like let's say knitting or crocheting, something we've looked at recently. So these micro communities, you can find just those people in the air period this way, even though it's not necessarily a crocheting club, you can find your people who like to do that very thing. So Fresno State, let's talk about Fresno State quickly. Uh, Fresno State is a overall minority serving institution um, uh, and specifically an HSI. Uh, uh, about 57% of their students are Hispanics, identify as Hispanic Latino. 
And it's also uh, uh, in uh, Asia um, and Pacific uh, serving institution as well. Uh, the undergrad enrollment, about 22,000, about 10% of those students are transfer students, an important population for Fresno State. So we'll talk a little bit more, more about transfer students. And a whopping 66% of the students at Fresno State are first generation. So every school has its own profile and Fresno State's, uh, 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 we can help see what their priority populations are by understanding some of that. So we talked about you know, value and culture and, and seeing this from the top uh, all through an organization. So here's an introduction of near peer to the students of Fresno State by, by its president, uh, Dr. Himal, uh, Jimenez Sandoval. And after that, we'll see just a quick video of a little bit more of the user experience in near peer. So you have this context that Alejandro and Michelle will be talking to you about in just a moment. Hello, I'm Saul Jimenez Sandoval, the interim president of Fresno State. As your president, I know how special our university is. I want to make sure you feel a sense of belonging here as well. This is why we set up a new resource called Near Peer to help you connect with other incoming Fresno State students. It will help you meet your future classmates and connect with them in a significant way. You'll be able to find people in our community who have similar interests life experiences, and more. Near Peer is a special platform just for you, our students, to get to know each other and forge a stronger sense of belonging. So, welcome to the Fresno State community. Now, start creating meaningful connections with Near Peer and go dogs! Hey, Fresno State students. Invited to join Near Peer and want to know what it is? Nearpeer is a new, really easy way to discover other students at your college who you have tons in common with. But what's different about Nearpeer? Platforms such as Instagram or Facebook can be good to stay connected with people you already know. But what about figuring out who you want to get to know? Nearpeer does just that. It helps you find other students at your college with shared interests, majors, life experiences, and more. Create a profile, enter your interests, a quick bio, career goal. You decide how much to share about yourself. And you're in. Now check out your peers by clicking the Discover tab. Near Peers matching algorithms instantly show you who you have the most in common with at your college. To meet peers, you don't have to introduce yourself in a large group if you'd rather not. Just connect and engage one-to-one. -one. And if you're a transfer student, veteran or international student, Nearpeer helps you find others with shared experiences. Wondering which students live near you or have a hometown near yours? So I'm going to pause there with time to get the general idea about Nearpeer and some of the, the uh, possibilities. Uh, and it's a very powerful and robust tool for you to use. But let's uh, continue from there. Hello, I'm Sol. And uh, hear just a, a little bit about how this idea of culture and belonging permeates Fresno State. Uh, and it's so central to their best practices around this uh, in our work together. So here's uh, Fang Yang. He is the Director of Undergraduate Admissions and Recruitment at Fresno State. We promise our students that they would be part of a, of a Bulldog family. <laughs> That's our promise to them, uh, that when they joined Fresno State, they were part of the Bulldog family, and we had to find a solution that would deliver on that promise. So a little more from Fong, who couldn't be on our webinar today. He had prior commitments, um, but uh, Michelle works with Fong uh, every day, uh, and Alejandro as a student knows Fong well too. You know, a lot of our students, it's their first time going to college, so they may, they may feel as confident going to college if they don't know anybody on campus. So I think Neil Peer just provides that sense of like uh, belonging, that sense of connection, that sense of, you know, having other people sharing some, some of the same experience that you, you, you share, uh, and even with some of the same interests you have. So, uh, I think it adds a lot to a student's experience. So I'm glad Fong could 
could weigh in a little bit. Sometimes people think they they hear some of our intro pieces and think, oh, this is this is you know all about um, uh, 18, 19 year old students. So I thought I'd share an anonymized um, actual uh, profile from Fresno State, and this is from a post traditional student. As she says in her bio, she's uh, she's uh, married and has uh, uh, three wonderful grown children. And, and she she participated uh, robustly in near period. You see all the actual interest that she put in. You can see how much about people uh, uh, that they can share. And this is an example of a non-traditional student. So with that, we'll shift gears uh, here and hear from uh, people like you who actually interact with the students on a daily basis and 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 how near peer has helped uh, overall. And we'll start with that question to both you, Michelle, and Alejandro. How does Nearpreneur help you better serve uh, students at Fresno State? You can, you can jump in, Michelle. Okay. Start. <laughs> I was going to have Alejandro <laughs> go first. <laughs> but I'll go, yeah. So at Fresno State, you know, we have over, you know, 22,000 students and usually an incoming class about of about 5,000. Um, so it just makes, it helps us connect with students and other students because our campus is mainly what is known as a commuter campus. So we don't have a large population that is uh, residential. So they don't, we don't have the requirement for them to live on campus as a first time freshman. And then we also have, um, it's about 60% uh, incoming freshmen and 40% upper division transfer students. So I think it just connects them more. Um, I was a student here at Fresno State. I'm a graduate and alumni. So if I had this opportunity, I could learn more about even students I didn't even know that existed here on campus when I went here. So I feel it just serves them greatly with connecting them to other students, either like themselves or maybe not like themselves that want to know more about a particular interest or maybe just a different culture um, here here on campus or off campus. Um, since uh, a majority of our of our classes will be um, on site this upcoming fall, um, but we still have a good a good amount of online classes. Right. It's an interesting point you you make, Michelle, about you know, uh, finding people who have something that's not the same as you too, right? I think that's part of affirming the community when, you know, somebody has something that's distinctly different and then you can you can have a conversation around that and enrich both of uh, your worlds. That's terrific. Alejandro, anything you want to add to that, that piece? I was going to say, adding on to what Michelle said is, I wish I had near peer when I was an incoming freshman. Um, because even though I was born and raised here in Fresno, um, even though Fresno State was down the street from me, I I didn't know where things were at. Like, I didn't know where the financial aid office was at. I didn't know where the admission office is at. I didn't know what this building was. I didn't know what that building was, right? I just knew where the football field was because, that you know, that's what we do um, in the Valley. Like, we go to football games. But um, something cool that near prayer has been helping us on our campus too is connecting students with the different resources on campus so a lot of times students don't know of every single resource that we have on campus that helps them such as the tutoring center and or the student health center um, our career and development center um, that near prayer has definitely 110 percent helped with um, connecting students with resources on campus that's compared great. to not having near prayer yeah, I think that's that, that's so important, and particularly when you think about it, amongst first generation students, uh, they don't have the guidance on how to navigate the higher ed experience, right? They're, they're pioneers in their families doing this, and and you know, who, there, there are resources that people would not even know existed, so they would never even know to ask for it. So that's a great point, uh, Alejandro, on, on that topic. So in near peer, you know, we're talking about peer engagement. Uh, the, the vast majority of the interaction in the peer is between students meeting and supporting and helping each other. Uh, but you two have some experience about uh, uh, some of the interaction as a student leader or as a staff member, some of the ways that you have engaged with students on the platform. I was gonna say, I know that Michelle and I can totally attest to this, but 
we're like in every single group uh, answering DM messages with students. We are on near peer probably 24 seven, you know, most more than other students. Um, I know that Michelle, Michelle, how many connections have you had on near peer? It's like over a billion, right? <laughs> a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, for Michelle and I, well, for me personally, I get a lot of, for me, um, I get a lot of like DN messages and or um, connection requests with students and I interact with them one-on-one -on -one, um, because a lot of them, you know, of course that's a feature if it's more comfortable to interact with someone more one-on-one. -on -one. So on my end, um, I do a lot of more one-on-one -on -one, um, messages with students, you know, students who have questions in regards to um, where's this building, where's that building, um, when is the date for this, you know, so on and so forth. But I know that Michelle's a little bit different where she's more interactive on the groups. And let me, let me clarify one, one thing for the audience is that you can communicate one-on-one -on -one with somebody only after you've requested a connection with them and they've accepted. So I think that's part of the student agency in here as well, is that it's not like anybody can bombard somebody with, with questions or comments. They have to be connected first. So that it's very proactive procedure and the students love connecting and the peer will see some data on, on, on how many connections they, they make in a moment. Michelle, you were about to say something on this front. Yeah, so I definitely do a lot of connecting and interacting in the groups. And then like Alejandra said, like some students are group, like you can see that they're just chatty Cathy's in the group and, and comfortable asking questions, no matter the question. Um, in the group. And then I do, uh, you know, I put my email in like my profile because I know I had students that were asking like super specific questions um, that one, I couldn't answer uh, in the chat because that just uh, for both that, yeah, they, it's like that's too personal. You can't put that in the chat. It's surprising what students might divulge in the chat sometimes um and then you know making that connection or i say hey you know connect with me and then send me your information um through the direct messages or i was even having students email me um because they had a specific situation that i actually needed to go into the system and kind of see what was going actually going on and figuring out uh, okay, how can I help the student? Um, and some things are just from whether, hey, I need to know where to buy a parking pass, or they have a super specific issue that they have no idea where to go um, or who to ask. And so I'm basically, you know, a great resource for students um, and other staff as well um, to kind of guide them uh, basically on, you know, their journey here at Fresno State and make them more connected and more comfortable as they see, hey, you know, Michelle from admissions and recruitment, or they may even not even know the office that I work for. Um, you know, Michelle at Fresno State helped me with this, or Alejandro helped me, um, whether it be find the the best bathrooms on campus. We do a, kind of a spiel on that for students. We had a uh, question about that too, yeah. <laughs> um, or, you know, just connecting with him personally because of the interest that he has and the involvement um, on campus that, that that he has, so. Terrific. And you, you were telling me a little bit about how the departments uh, use it, like financial aid, you know, that uh, students can get their financial aid questions answered. And they seem to, the, the staff seems to love it because they can answer a question, you know, just once and, and, and 10 students get the answer to, a question about uh, uh, you know, FA specific, like uh, award letters haven't been issued yet or something like that. And they don't have to take in 10 phone calls, which is, which is uh, pretty cool. Michelle, do you think it makes you more uh, sort of accessible, you know, as a staff person from, from your perspective? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, meeting students where they're at. Um, I know uh, Christopher hasn't kind of showed kind of showed more of like a, a mobile device they you know the app um but i have it both as an app and as um it works great on a computer or a laptop or pc mac whatever you have um which i find so enjoyable i also run social media for our office and so if you've ever ran instagram on a computer or a laptop you know exactly what i'm talking about um so meeting students where they're at and the connection you know uh being a helpful resource, um, whether they want to do it a chat or 
a direct message or an email. Um, so it's finding that student and like our financial aid group, you know, minimizing the time that, hey, that student may not even want to ask that question, but they can find the answer uh, in the chat, you know, look back through um, the questions that they have answered. So yeah, being a vital resource for in another avenue instead of, you know, how many, you know, emails have you, you know, have students sent or, you know, that don't get answered or they're on the phone for on hold for a little bit of time. They can't come to campus and come in person or maybe that wasn't even an option, um, you know, either during COVID or uh, or now that we're kind of coming out of that. So it's just it, just another way. And then students can kind of figure out which way is best for them. But if not, like I said, I can put stuff in the chat depending on what chat they're in and they can kind of find the answer. Or I have students now like putting in the answers uh, to questions. So it's like they're actually helping other students because they know the answer. Or one time I didn't even know when you could buy parking passes and a student was putting in a date. So I knew, I found out something that I didn't know about Fresno State. So, so yeah. Funny. That's a, uh, that's a great example. And Alejandro, I'll come to you to answer the, the question uh, that's on the screen here about helping students feel how they belong. But let me answer some questions that came in through the Q&A quickly. There's a question about bullying and other bad behavior. Uh, I'll, I'll just answer this quickly by saying, first off, there's very little to none uh, in terms of what we would deem inappropriate behavior. Uh, the incidents that we do have are very minor, things like somebody has an inappropriate message on the t-shirt in their profile photo, something like that. Uh, the students behave well uh, because there's no anonymity in the platform. It's a closed community just for your students. Uh, and there's a verification process that, that people come in. And we moderate the platform as does every user. And so any user can flag anything as inappropriate. It gets triaged uh, very quickly and that content can be taken down. And as I said earlier, you can't even reach out to somebody directly unless you're connected. And again, students have agency, they can disconnect right away. Uh, and then that person is no longer uh, accessible to them. So behavior has been phenomenal on the platform, tens of thousands of students uh, who are on, and it's been a non-issue. Uh, uh, the last question in the q and I'll answer quickly. Uh, multilingual options available in the near peer. The simple answer is it's it's a it's a keyboard uh, on a computer or phone based uh, app. So if if the keyboard supports the language, so does near peer. So whatever you type in in that language will show up uh, with that uh, you know in the uh, in the app. So that's a quick answer to that. So Alejandro, uh, has near peer helped students feel like they belong? And you know what's been your experience with some of uh, uh, the other students that. Um, Fresno State? In short, yes. Um, and being a student still myself on campus um, and being a near peer intern, um, I speak to a lot of students on um, Fresno State campus and even just at other universities um, in the chat, um, in our chat features and group features, how um, near peer has helped students a lot in um, belonging on their campus. Um, there was one student who was talking about how um, I had met with him last summer and he was talking about how his school pride, you know, like he's very prideful in Fresno State um, because of all the information that he's learning about Fresno State and near peer, how um, we help with this, we help with that, so on and so forth. So um, I'd say um, it has definitely helped students belong because you can find students within um, the same interests as you, um, same affinity group, um, same cultural background, so on and so forth. Um, so in short, I, I can ramble on, on and on, but in short, yes. That's great. That's very helpful. Um, so we'll, sw we'll switch gears on a question I think we touched on a little bit, but you know, how, how is your experience using Nearpur different from you know, social media platforms that, that you might use um, uh, uh, in a professional or personal capacity, like what, what what's different about it, and you know what what are, what are some of the the pluses that you see there? This has got to be a question that we get a lot, and me and Michelle got this a lot during the summertime at Dog Days. Is 
oh, okay, so this is like a social media app, right? Like super cool, huh? And we're like, no, like, no, it is not a social media app. This is a um, connecting app where um, you make connections and you network and um, it's nothing like social media. And so when we get to start explaining, you know, the features in um, Near Peer and um, what Near Peer does, um, students were like, oh, okay, like, this is definitely not like social media. I forget what me and Michelle were saying over dog days was, um, did we say like, this is a social LinkedIn or like, this is like a academic Instagram? I forgot like what we were telling students for them to like, fully grasp what Near Peer was. But it was definitely funny how many times um, we got this question. But um, Near Peer um, differs from social media because it's a networking app. You know, um, you make one on one connections, you chat in group features. Um, it's, it, in my opinion, better than social media because this definitely promotes um, sense of belonging. That's great. You know, in, in the, uh, the app, in the platform, there's no place to share media. So you can't post videos or memes or nastiness. Uh, it's really about finding other people. So when you're in, in the app, you're finding other people, not just when you're just starting school, but also along the way, anytime groups reform. So when you have a class that forms, who else is in this giant chemistry class with me? And who might I form a study group with? I've just moved into the residence hall. Who, who else lives in this residence hall that might be from my hometown? Those sorts of things are, are what's in here, not, uh, not content that we, people are searching for likes and follows uh, from. Michelle, looks like you were going to add something to that, too, about your experience, because I know you post some of the social media for, for Fresno State and the incoming students. Is that right? Yeah. So we, we're calling it an academic LinkedIn. I think that's what we kind of like how do we kind of relate it to the students? Cause they were just like, what is it? You know? And they were thinking it was social media and we're like, it's not um, like, you can't tweet, you can't post, you can't like that kind of stuff. And then with like the security of it, um, you know, you have to make that connection for someone to send you a message. Um, so yeah, it just differs. Yeah, I do. Like I said, I run on social media. I run three platforms for our office uh, specifically. So it's definitely, it's not even close to the same. Um, it's so nice to have something that's you can connect with students um, and even staff and others on a different level. And it's just not, it's not posting and it's um, none of that. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. So, uh, Mike, we'll take some open questions uh, from the chat and otherwise here uh, uh, in a moment. There is one that came through the Q&A, um, so we can uh, uh, answer that. It's about, you know, when rolling out on campus, do you want to roll it out to just the incoming cohort or all students? Um, and, and the answer is yes and yes. It's really up to you how you want your students to engage. So with, with incoming students, when they, they're, they're first admitted, you can uh, uh, reach them then or before. Uh, once they've committed and through the summer or when they just start school at orientation, but all students on campus, uh, they have an interest in being in near peer. They, uh, uh, you know, continuing students who are, you know, second, third, or fourth year, uh, they have new interests that they might be pursuing. And how do I find people that like that interest? I'm not fully baked when I uh, arrive as a first year student, and I may take up a new a new pastime. And how can I find other people who like to play pickleball or you know uh, or, or play a board game that I never that, that I never tried before? Um, there, there are things in here that different departments can use when people come together. So we mentioned Res Life, but clubs and organizations. There are ways in which you can uh, reach everybody who has an interest in outdoor activities and let them and just them know that the outdoor activity uh, uh, club is coming up um, with its uh, organizational meeting. So anywhere where students come together and reform again, they love to be in here. Students who are upper class students also like to be mentors to students who are just coming in, people like Alejandro, who really uh, has a, a helping spirit and wants to help others navigate because they've been there and done that. So I think those are some of the ways that it is used. Okay. And uh, there's a question here, and, and Michelle and Alejandro, you could probably weigh in. How many staff are required to manage chats and the rest of the app? Uh, are all the chats live chat 
or our AI chats included? Well, first, we, we don't have a, um, uh, a chat bot today, something that uh, we're, we're considering. Uh, but in terms of how much to be in near peer and how much staff time it takes, it can take very little to none. You know, 90, like I said, 95% is probably higher than that. The average staff person might spend at their discretion, you know, an, an hour uh, in near peer every few months uh, in total. Some people spend a lot of time because they see it as a mechanism to help people. I think Michelle would be in that world <laughs> because it's uh, it's an effective tool for you. Michelle, you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, about that? You're muted. Yeah. Okay. So I probably am in that top tier of, I probably use it all the time. It's up on my screen right now. Like uh, I'm fortunate to have three screens. And so near peer is technically on one screen, just so that way I can keep up with it. And especially we are starting class uh, for fall on Monday. So as of right now, like yesterday, there wasn't really any much action going on. This morning when I logged in, it was like, oh, I have like nine plus chats somewhere in the in my in my groups. And so I'm almost on every group just because I am like the coordinator for our campus um, and our uh, Fresno State has a lot of groups. Um, but like our financial aid group, um, the person that was running it last year, uh, she would have like financial aid Thursdays or something like that. So she only checked it. Um, and answered questions on Thursdays because um, she had, obviously she has other job duties and and busy. And so she only checked it and answered on Thursdays and put that in kind of like a notation, like, hey, th this is when I'm going to answer the, the chats. But it really doesn't take that much time. You can have a notification if you have it on your phone, a notification or an email sent that say, hey, you have some new uh, chats uh, in your in your groups or you have a message or whatever the case may be. So there is ways to get notifications if you are just, hey, I don't have a ton of time um, to manage it. It doesn't take that much. Um, and there's ways to to know if there's something going on. Um, but yeah, I'm in that weird yeah, I, say That's weird cool. here, but <laughs> I think what comes what comes through is how student centric you are and the entire campus is. So if, if a student is reaching you like, well, we, we want to help them. But I have to say that Fresno State has probably more groups than any of our uh, university or college partners today. So you have over 100 groups, I'm sure. Uh, some schools, even big schools, University of Oklahoma, I think, has four groups, you know, for out-of-state students, in-state students, and, and and a couple of others, uh, maybe for veterans, uh, might have been another one. So you can control that completely at your institution, because we build a custom instance of near peer for you. So uh, when, when, we, when we choose to work together, we customize the app. Only your students can get in. You decide how many groups to come out of the gate with, and you you have the ability to add groups later. So groups can be things like uh, alliances, like LGBTQ, I plus. Uh, it can be just interests. At, at uh, Fresno State, anime was one of their top interests, and they have a very active anime group. All the, the students just talk about anime, and we know we like anime. I can click on your profile and see well what, what else do we share in common. It's sort of the first filter. So really, uh, you have you know full control of that lever uh, uh, on staff time. It, it, it can take no staff time at all, and implementation. Uh, takes minimal staff time. We'll hear from Fong on that in just a, a moment. Okay, looks like no other questions have come in, so we'll keep it moving along here. We'll have one last chance for questions at the end. Um, uh, I, I pulled up this one because some, you know, asking about what does it take? You know, is, is this is this a, a heavy lift? So let's hear from Fong directly uh, on that one. We are all busy with, with what we do on a daily basis. And um, uh, the last thing we want is another is a system that's going to be cumbersome in terms of like setups and, you know, requiring a lot of technology expertise and so forth. And and um, we wanted something that was more of a turnkey, you know, yeah, plug and play type of type of a, a product. So I think attending the demo is, is key and really seeing what the students are seeing as well as what the staff will be seeing as well which is also key 
uh, and the level of setup that's required, which is in this case, uh, almost um, very non, um, minimal in, in this case. Uh, so the product for us, the reason why we decided to go with NearPeer was uh, we found out that the product is e easy to use, not just on the student side, but also on the, on the staff side. Uh, it's definitely a turnkey solution, in my opinion, because there's really uh, no uh, extensive training, no extensive setup on our end. Uh, we provide information, but the near peer team does all the setup for us. That's beauty, the beauty part of it, the beautiful part of it. Uh, and then once you create a profile, you know, the interface is very simple. I mean, if, so I'm always looking at it from the user's point of view, which is a student. You know, if you make it difficult, then students don't, are not going to want to use it because they have so many other social media platforms that they are uh, themselves have to maintain. So we don't want to make it work for them. You know, we want to make it a very pleasant experience. Great. A couple of other questions that came in. Um, and one was about data. And uh, somebody had read in the report, this was uh, Kristen uh, said, uh, you know, there was a, there was a uh, 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 you know, some data presented in our outcomes report. Uh, and, you know, the initial data was about adoption and engagement. And that's how many, uh, in this particular study, during that first three months, uh, how often did the students come back? about 51 times, they spent about six hours on the platform. In the social media world, that may not sound like a lot, but we're not social media. This is six plus hours just of connecting and interacting with other students. This would be like your entire orientation day spent just connecting. That one hour that you might have over lunch, that you might meet a couple of people, you can find uh, a lot of people in the peer that, that you really um, resonate with. And then before move-in even happened for them or the, the first day of class from, from the commuter perspective, uh, each student had made on average 24 connections. And those students who were on the near peer platform uh, had a, a 2.3x uh, 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 lower no-show rate. So a higher no-show rate for non-peer non -peer users is, is the flip of that. So this is you know, our first data point along the longitudinal study of the students and where they come in. And we looked at other slices of that. For example, we said this is uh, an HSI. So amongst uh, Hispanic students, uh, they were 2.85 times less likely to melt as compared to non-users. Uh, the question also goes on to say, well, you know, that's, that's one group and maybe those people were more high intent, maybe not, but what happens once they matriculate? So now that's a new homogenous group and people matriculate and they come in and they have high intent of, of staying if you actually showed up. And we just uh, reported their uh, persistence uh, rates were much, much higher uh, for, uh, uh, for the near peer users, three percentage points higher. And you know, uh, I'm, I'm sharing directionally the data for them, not their actual uh, 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 persistence rates. But I think the key here is that uh, for those of you on the call who are in, uh, in, in you know, the retention side of things, student affairs side of things, uh, a half percentage point movement is huge, right? So a three percentage point difference uh, is, is phenomenal. And we, we are outcomes focused. We do statistical analysis on all data through a third party uh, 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 data scientist. And for us, we want to understand what what needle are you trying to move? And we want to help move that with you and measure it together with you because we want to share in, in, in that success and be uh, a close collaborator. All right, let's see. Um, last little slice of data, transfer students. We said very important, 10% of the population there. The, the students who transferred were 2X more likely to return for the spring term, 2X more likely to return for the spring term. Uh, uh, if they were near peer users, they felt connected to the community and stayed, which is which is pretty cool. All right, let's see. We'll play one last um, video here, and then I think we might have one last question. We've got about eight minutes to go. Uh, uh, I, you know, I love these because these this is feedback uh, from the students. Alejandro interviewed. Uh, some of these uh, uh, students to ask them what what was your experience like you know so 
uh, we started this uh, this presentation with you know the president of Fresno State, but really uh, uh, what the students think is what is what matters. So uh, we'll hear some of their stories here uh, now. I opted in to download near peer because being a transfer student, I didn't really know a whole lot about Fresno or in the area. So for me, I figured I would have a hard time transitioning. Near peer did help relieve some of that stress just because it's nice knowing that maybe there could be somebody else that it's in the same boat as you. One of my favorite things about near peer is groups and a lot of people can just join a group. I've seen a lot of, um, groups that are titled like Taylor Swift, you know, a group that, you know, all the Swifties want to join or Boba. Um, I've been in one where it's healthy minds, just about like our well-being. So I've loved those because we can just connect with people that have similar interests as us. I would not have found a roommate if it wasn't thanks to Near Peer. Near Peer was essential for me finding a roommate out here in Fresno, especially since I'm coming a long way. Through Near Peer, I was able to meet Alex, and I'm, I'm, I'm ever blessed for that. And something else is that through Near Peer, I was also to meet other musicians since I also like partake in making music. And it helped me shape uh, some relationship too, with like make, make more friends too as well. Because I just randomly went to that same group chat about like sports because I'm interested in like soccer and stuff like that. And I made more friends. We got the email saying, oh, you can meet people, make friends. And then something that caught my eye was that there's a section especially for your major. So that's where I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Then I get to meet people who's going into the same field as me. I do like to study like in groups. I feel like it's better for me. I don't think I can focus studying by myself. In my profile, um, I actually have that I'm looking for uh, a roommate and I've talked to a couple girls too. And I'm pretty sure that if we end up being roommates that we'll probably just like carpool. I would say that I was definitely nervous and scared just because it was going to be a completely new like environment. And I think uh, the app definitely had an uh, impact on my, like, on my transferring process because it did make it easier. Sometimes it's harder to start friendships in person. So I feel like near peer can be like that. Um, it can be like that, like the first step into like starting new friendships. I am, I'm from basically from India. It was like a new change of country for me. So I was a bit concerned. The app basically helps you uh, to get out of that awkward phase, which everyone have at their first day of college. If you're interested in downloading near peer, I would recommend it. Um, it personally has helped me be a lot calmer about going into Fresno State. Um, I had a couple friends, but they're not in the same major as me. So I was kind of, you know, freaking out, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know who to talk to. Um, but it definitely helped me. And now I have a friend um, that I talk to every day. This is the first social media that I have that is exclusively people I don't know and people that I would like to get to know. I have two kids, so there's like a group for people that also are going to Fresno State with kids. And I think it's really scary to go to a really big school. So it's nice, even if I were to meet one person on the app, it's nice to know that I'm not going to a big, scary place full of people I don't know. There's people that I'm gonna recognize. I think students and staffers should download Mirror Peer because there's so many questions out there that that students get immediately answered whether it's by another student or a staffer it's just another great resource i don't think i've ever seen a question go unanswered somebody is always there to help and that's what i really like about it is it really does pull you closer to your campus so there's um it's always fun to hear from the students i don't get tired of that uh, uh, so we have a few minutes for a couple of last questions. There's one in, in, in the Q&A, and that is, uh, uh, do faculty have profiles? Again, up to the institution, faculty love to have profiles. Uh, imagine having your class and, uh, you know, of 10 students or 150 students, and, you, you know, uh, you can form a group just for your class. So there can be a, a group just for that class. And it helps humanize that faculty learner relationship. 
and helps build learning community when students can find people who are in the class that they may share other things in common with and will feel very comfortable studying with or participating in group projects with. And I think for the, for the faculty, you know, uh, to students, particularly first-gen students, the, the professors in the ivory tower, like they're, they're, they're untouchable, I can't even interact with them. But if, if, if suddenly I say, hey, my professor also likes to play the guitar, isn't that cool? If they're a real person, uh, then maybe I might go to the office hour and actually uh, interact where I might have avoided it otherwise. So yes, faculty can, and like everything else in Europe here, uh, the institution has agency. You can set it up to fit how you work. Today, we looked at uh, Fresno State, their specific needs, and how they've implemented near peer. Every school and uh, university is a little bit different. So with that, we'll take the last couple of questions in our last two minutes. And uh, I'll have uh, uh, Michelle and Alejandro get 30 seconds or so to, to wrap up and share anything else they would like. Did we um, did we get to that question in the Q and A already about um, best practice on focusing on an incoming class or to the entire student body? I may have missed we, it. We did get to that, Mike. So yeah, again, that was one of the questions where I said it's it's at your discretion oh, okay. to to which group uh, you would release near peer to. And Sorry about that. As well. Yep. Thanks for checking that. All right, with that, um, Michelle, you want to um, give some closing comments or any thoughts that you have from from today? And then uh, let me go to Alejandro and then we'll wrap. Yeah, I just think, um, I just feel that it's a great resource for students um, to find information, especially during this kind of weird transition time. If your university is, transitioning back into um, on-site or maybe doing both. Um, I feel it's a great resource and I can connect with a lot more students and answer their questions. Like the last person, last student in the video, you just get your question answered. Um, you're not you're not waiting in line, you're not on the phone, you're not in email. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, a, it's a great resource and we love it here at Fresno State. All right, and Alejandro, you have the last word. It's three, it's three o'clock East Coast straight up right now, so uh, take us home. Yeah, so just adding on to what Michelle said, um, Nearpeer is an amazing resource and tool for students to use. Um, and being a student myself, currently still at Fresno State, um, and using Nearpeer, it's kind of funny, both using it as a student and, and as a staff member, um, I love it so much. I love near peer so much. And like Michelle had mentioned earlier is I wish I had near peer when I was an incoming freshman at Fresno State. Um, it would have made things so much easier and better for me when it comes to my mental health, especially being anxious and scared coming to a campus where I don't see the same people every single day like we do in high school. Um, so um, near peer is an amazing tool and resource um, and I love it so much. Thank you so much, uh, Alejandro, and thank you, Mike, from ACPRO for uh, uh, supporting us here today. Uh, Glitch-free technology, appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for taking an hour out of your day to spend some time with us. Uh, my uh, email address is on the screen. Feel free to reach out if you just have any questions, and I'd love to, uh, love to chat and, and hear how we might help you. Uh, all the best, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.